Okay, understanding creationism. It comes in many brands, and his, I'm going to kind of fly through this part of the lecture because it's kind of obvious. There are non-Judeo-Christian creationisms, and uh, doing anthropology, I've listened to people tell me about their origin myths. It's all very interesting. Um, the ones that you're likely to notice if you are into the sort of politicization of, of uh, native movements are the ones that come out of native Hawaiians and who are asserting a kind of creationist um, um, tradition there. Western Native Americans, predominantly the um, Indi Plains Indians and Southwest Indians, uh, and Native Australians, all of whom are politicizing their uh, tradition in creationism. <coughs> Islamic creationism is a factor and a growing factor in Western Europe. Don't ignore that. And in Judeo-Christian tradition, we can look at a kind of crude spectrum that goes all the way from uh, the creator just kind of got the system going and then let go. So kind of very passive form of creationism. And then all the way up to the extreme other end, flat earth geocentric young earth creationists. Whoa. The, along the spectrum, um, and now I'm going to say, say something about intelligent design in a second, too. Along the spectrum, the one that has become most politically powerful are not flat earthers. Never mind them. That's an extremely minor number of people. And never mind the geocentrists. They're kind of out of the picture, too. But young earth creationists are very much part of the picture. And there are many organizations that are promoting this. Now, let's start with the young earth part. Young Earth, that means that the universe was created, not just the Earth, but the entire universe, within the last 10,000 years. Where do they get that magic number? It's from reading the Bible and working back from, okay, Methuselah was 968 years old, and so on and so forth, and pretty soon you get back to Adam and Eve, and pretty soon you count six days before that or something, and you've got the, the date for the creation of the universe. Uh, Bishop James Usher was the main man here who calculated, and you got to hand it to him. He must have worked very hard on this and came up with, what is it? But does anyone remember the exact date? October 23rd. <laughs> Something like October 23rd. I was hoping you'd know, because actually I don't. I think it's October 23rd, and I think somebody and this may have been a joke or an apocryphal story, put it at 9 a.m. or something like that. <laughs> okay. So that's the argument that young earth creationists use. Now, what can you possibly say about that, and how could anyone possibly believe that? Never mind, there are lots of organizations out there pushing this. Probably the one that is best funded and pushing it most aggressively is called Answers in Genesis. The, this, the head of this group is, is Ken Ham, and he is Mr. Speaker. He'll get out there and attract, I mean, this audience. I'm proud that this is my audience, but he would be ashamed to have an audience this small. He thinks he should have an audience of about 2,000 people wherever he goes, and they're all going to pull out their wallets afterwards, too. They're the ones who started the, the museum, well-publicized museum, um, on the the Kentucky side of the Ohio River, sort of a suburb of Cincinnati, and it's called the Creation Museum, and I went there. I spent eight full hours there, immersed. There's also the Creation Science Research Center and the Institute for Creation Research. There's some kind of tie they have to each other. I don't know. There are multiple universities that force their faculty to sign a creed and part of the creed is a, a fundamentalist, literalist view of the Bible. Patrick Henry, right near us, Liberty University, Bob Jones, and bunches of them around the country. There are many other museums. In addition to that one outside of Cincinnati, there's one in Santee, California, where I spend another quality time, much quality time, even, even interviewing the director of that place. Um, and then there are amusement parks. I have not had the joy of going to one of the amusement parks, but I hope to soon. The one I'm aiming for is Dinosaur Adventureland in Pensacola. Okay. The field trip for the NCAS is now planned. Um, it was started by Kent Hovind, 
Sadly, he is in prison right now for tax <laughs> evasion. But in his happier moments, he uh, went out on the speaker tour, was very much an outspoken proponent of young earth creations. I think he may have written a book or two and directed his amusement park. And this you can appreciate for free. Go home to your computer, www.youtube.com, and search words Kent Hovind and The Ali G Show. <laughs> don't miss it. It's, it's a hoot. Um, and I don't know if you know who Ali G is. I'm not going to go into that now. You must find out, however. Okay, enough of young earth creationism. Now we'll talk about intelligent design that can include anybody on any portion of the spectrum. The main punchline of intelligent design is succinctly naturalistic explanations for any natural phenomenon. And they don't want to stop at just um, evolution. They want to infect every aspect of naturalistic science, from meteorology to physics to ge geology to medicine, anything. It's all within their, their uh, um, ambition. Anyway, naturalistic explanations are not sufficient. Why not allow the supernatural, magic, miracles, guardian angels, and of course God, to be part of your explanation for any natural phenomenon? It makes perfectly good sense. It's, after all, the open-minded thing to do, isn't it? When asked, um, are you talking about a supernatural being necessarily for the creation of the universe, or could it be a natural being, the uh, spokesperson said, well, we just don't know. But there is, for sure, an intelligent designer out there. We know it because we see all of the evidence for the wondrous things in the world, especially in, in organisms and especially human beings. No one can really say for sure. So it might be a natural intelligent designer out there. So who would this be? Hmm. It's the spaghetti monster. And there is our wonderful spaghetti monster who is creating life. And if you uh, love to go to shopping malls everywhere and study people's magnetic um, symbols of their identity, you'll recognize that there are the Christians and the creationists and there are the Darwinists and there's, of course, the flying spaghetti monster worshipers. They've got to be there. 